take a look at this interaction. A few interesting things are happening here. At first, we can freely move the character. Once we start the interaction, Alice will automatically navigate towards the bench, though we can still interrupt it by going in the opposite direction. Finally, once we sit down and the monologue starts, we can no longer move anywhere. This is an example of a few separate systems fighting over which of them should control our movement. And I'd like to show you how I approach this problem in Astortion. Let's start with a classic player controller. It reads the player's input and then moves our character accordingly. The first thing we need to do is to decouple this controller from the input system. We're gonna do that by introducing a new entity called Input Provider. It will provide the controller with all the information necessary to move our character. For example, things like movement direction or whether or not we want to crouch. Notice that these are continuous variables that we will most likely access every frame. But there are also cases where we're interested in the very act of pressing the key rather than its current value. Jumping, for instance. With that in mind, our input provider would look like this. A getState method that returns a struct containing all the variables, and an event for each of our actions. In this case, it's only jumping. We can use this provider inside our controller to receive events and read the current input, without directly accessing the input system. Now that the decoupling is done, we can connect the systems I mentioned before to our provider. We'll use a pattern called chain of responsibility to do that. Imagine a class with a process method that takes an input state as an argument, modifies it however it wants, and then returns it back. We're gonna call it input middleware. We can chain a bunch of middlewares together, one for every system, to create a sort of assembly line. When the player controller asks for the current state, the provider will create an empty one and pass it through this chain. First, the input system will populate the state. Next, the dialog system will reset any illegal inputs during a monologue. Then, if navigation is required, the navigation system will override the input to get us to our destination. And lastly, the resulting state will be passed to the controller. Now, to handle jumping, we'll need to introduce an additional variable to the input state, called canJump. Every middleware will have its own internal jump event. Whenever any of them gets triggered, the provider will check if can jump is set to true, and if so, it will broadcast the event further. This way, any middleware can trigger the event, but our assembly line can still block it. The idea behind all of this is flexibility. Say you wanted to add an accessibility option for auto-crouching. You can just insert a new middleware to the chain that will take care of that. But maybe middlewares are not suitable for you and you'd prefer a state machine. You can also do that. In fact, the beauty of an input provider, or a strategy pattern if you want to be fancy, is that you can have many different implementations and switch between them however you like. The input doesn't even need to come from the player, you can have an input provider hooked up to some AI and reuse your player controller for things like allies or enemies. Also, it's a good idea to implement a provider using a scriptable object. This way, we can define it once and then access it wherever necessary. By the way, thanks so much to all my patrons. We have actually managed to reach our goal and it's just incredible. So uh, yeah, also thank you for watching and until the next time.